you've made it to Cairo Hustle Live. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Clothes for Cairo, Cairo Sushi, Dr. Barbara Eaton's 56 Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, Dr. Alok Trevetti, The Black Diamond Club, Element Mattresses, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, Med Zone, Vantage Point Marketing, Movo University, Vita Chiropractic, The Universal Tractioning System, Imaging Services, Ignite Marketing, and Zingit Solutions. Let's hustle. Hey guys, uh, Jim Chester here. I am a uh, Cairo Hustle uh, live stream right now with Steve Thaxton and Sean Cottrell. They are out in West Virginia, Sissonville, and I am in Grand Junction, the Grand Valley of the Western Slope of Colorado, which I like to say no one lives, and I came here to hear the birds chirp. So this episode is brought to us today by Imaging Services, other shoulder, I always do it, I never get it right. Um, by Imaging Services, it's Michael Tokash, and if you guys have needs for x-ray equipment or installs with the best technology and the best service provided, uh, reach out to myself or Michael Tokash and we can help you out with his services. But I, I want to give a warm welcome to Steve and Sean. Uh, thank you for joining me on this. Uh, this It's actually kind of a, a heart-wrenching episode that we're going to be releasing, but um, it's, it's, a real, it's a real episode that's uh, necessary. And the, the main of it is talking about the opiate epidemic and the opiate crisis, um, not only in West Virginia where those boys are out there, but uh, out here and uh, possibly Colorado, but they, they got some really uh, cool stuff doing that they're doing to get the uh, people to understand that chiropractic is the answer for these concerns. So welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for having us, Jim. <laughs> so we had quite the pre-interview chat. We, we touched on a lot of different stuff, but um, June 7th was a, a pretty big day about a week ago. It was a big day uh, in West Virginia. Let's talk about how significant that day was. Sean, go ahead, brother. Well, we uh, got uh, some language in the Opioid Reduction Act bill uh, that benefits what chiropractic and all other physical medicines are will be allowed to do after June 7th. So we're pretty excited about it because what what we could what we were trying to do is we really ultimately want to change the public's perception of if you've got a neuromuscular skeletal complaint. Don't have your first thought be take a pill. Your first thought should be, what can I do for it myself? You're, and if you're not able to handle it, then you should be looking at a chiropractor or a physical medicine practitioner to deal with your pain. That's how we should have it. But somewhere along the line, we've all been fed a, a bunch of horse crap that you got to take a pill if, that is, uh, if you got pain. And that's not the right answer. It's masking and covering the problem up and has led us to a point where we are in our state with um, the opioid crisis that our current state and many states, probably most states now are in. Uh, in our particular state of West Virginia, we have a gross domestic product of $4.4 billion going out every year, but we're spending $8.8 billion on the opioid crisis. So our state cannot handle this very long, this kind of uh, loss of economic dollars, uh, as well as something Sean brought up earlier about the children. We're losing more parents to this opioid crisis and the children are being taken from the home. We don't have homes to put the children in. So there's going to be a whole generation of people that have been so adversely affected by this. If we don't change our way of thinking and utilizing of the healthcare providers that are not using pharmaceutical medication to cover these problems up. So tell me this, what, what did you guys do to enact change? How did you guys step up and what, what, what is uh, the course of action you guys took to, to change the perception of the way that the bill is getting passed and how did you change that? Well, there was a, a group of about four of us along with the chiropractic society and we took um, scientific research up to the senators and the house of delegates and educated them set them down and talked to them and told them that the way the wording was on the opioid reduction act bill it's not going to reduce it they need to change the wording of the bill and we had some help from a couple senators and then we had some help from the house of delegates 
It actually passed 87 to 1 in the House of Delegates and 32 to 0 in the Senate. So we were really pleased with those numbers, but we had to do a lot of education. And one of the main things that we had to do was they, they had chiropractic in it, but only after, the, after it was a chronic stage. So after 90 days of opioid therapy, then you could refer to a chiropractor. And that put our profession at such a disadvantage. We felt like we need to be the first line of defense. We need to be in the acute stages for us to have a, our best chance of curbing this drug crisis. So we started talking with the various senators and House of Delegate representatives, and we were able to change the language over to get it converted to putting chiropractors and other physical medicine practitioners in as the first line of defense, which is really exciting to have the medical doctors they were required to refer to chiropractors or physical medicine practitioners first before they could start an opioid intervention or an opioid uh, plan. And that put us right on the front lines. Where we're so, going. yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people out there, they're going to be watching this. If you guys are out there, I'm going to do a quick pattern interrupt with the audience. If you guys are out there watching, uh, just tell me what city you guys are watching and from. And if you guys are watching us on replay, put in the comments, hashtag replay. So I know if you guys watched us on a replay, but I also want to know where you guys are watching in from now. The more you guys participate with us, the more information uh, that, that Steve and Sean share with us, Dr. Steve and Dr. Sean share with us, the more that people are going to be aware of what's happening with the opiate epidemic in this nation and with the state of West Virginia. I know that there's so much going on in the state of West Virginia. I just don't even know the depth of it yet. So when I heard that there was uh, through the grapevine that there was some bill going to get passed to give uh, 20 visits per episode when somebody has an opiate uh, episode, um, to a chiropractor. I thought that that was a major win for the profession. I know we're kind of still dancing with the insurance companies, but if we're getting referrals and we're saving people's lives, um, I think it's a necessary uh, step to take and it builds more credibility for the chiropractic profession, allowing more people to get care and really becoming uh, the port of entry as many people kind of uh, say that chiropractic should become. Uh, people say a chiropractor should become the port of entry care for people with any type of health concerns. And then the chiropractor should be able to be versed well enough to either take care of that person or refer out um, to the proper practitioner. Um, but let's let's talk about this uh, change and how and how these 20 visits are going to have an impact on people that um, have some type of an opiate concern. Well, the thing about it is they can go a patient can walk into the physical medicine office. They don't need a referral. It's the referral part of the bill is at a, like an urgent care, a doctor still can write a four day script, but only a four day script. Then that's when he has to write a referral to physical medicine. Your primary care doc can give you a seven day script, but he also has to give you a referral to physical medicine but the patient can walk into a physical medicine office without a script. So the 20 episodes per or 20 treatments per episode is now so they can't cap chiropractic. So they can't just give you 20 a year because people have more incidents and more pain than just 20 treatments a year. Also our primary care co-pays that people pay will be the same copay in our office. We're no longer a specialist. So we had to look at some of the hurdles that, that prevented patients from coming into a chiropractic office or choosing chiropractic as their first line of defense for these problems. And the hurdles so often are money. So if the insurance companies were only giving us 12 visits, well, quite often it's going to take more than 12 visits to get that patient back to normal where they can do their activities of daily living and live the life that they're trying to live. So we felt like 20 was a fair number, a good number. We felt like we should be able to make some great inroads, if not completely, ideally get them completely healed within 20 visits. And then we also had to get ourselves out of the specialist category because the specialist co-pays are significantly higher. So we were able to convince the legislatures to make the co-pays, require the insurance companies to make the co-pays the same as their primary care physician. That way, 
when they came to our office, it was the same as if they went to a primary care physician. And every chiropractor out there in the United States, the reality is we were all trained as primary care physicians. Not everybody practices that way, but we were all trained that way. So we should be paid appropriately as primary care physicians, and we should be able to be treating our patients as primary care physicians if that's what you choose to do as a chiropractor. And also in this bill, um, all insurances doing business within the state of West Virginia have to cover chiropractic services that are underneath the scope of our practice that we're allowed to do, which is anything we were trained for in school, because in our state of West Virginia, we are a licensed physician. We're not a chiro we're chiropractors, but we're a licensed physician. So, so let me ask you guys this. Do you think that this will cause an influx of more chiropractors coming to the state of West Virginia to start taking care of this at-risk population? Hope so. Love to have them. We've got 6,000 medical doctors, only 200 practicing chiropractors, so we'd love more. Yeah, I, I think that there's definitely going to be a, a position for people to say um, we can come in and uh, help and we can be of service. And, you know, I, I kind of joke around sometimes, but chiropractors have that Peace Corps mentality, give love and serve, but they don't uh, understand what it is to run the business side of it. So if they can come out there and start really helping give love and serve and uh, getting paid well to do that, um, I think that there will be a definitely a, a, a big influx for the need of chiropractic out there in, in uh, West Virginia. Um, I have a couple more questions I want to field to you guys. But first one is, um, are you seeing other states that are becoming more interested in, in uh, bringing this type of uh, a format and this type of uh, plan to their state for the opiate crisis that other states are uh, finding that are, you know, they're troubled with? I've had... Um... New Hampshire's wanted a copy of the bill. Michigan's wanted a copy of the bill. Pennsylvania's wanted a copy of the bill. And between the groups and society, we've had at least at a minimum about 19 other states that have contacted somebody with questions. That uh, sounds like a big win there, too. So. This might not just be a huge flux of uh, chiropractors coming to the state of West Virginia. It might be a huge flux of more people going to school to become chiropractors to uh, go out there and to make sure that we have the bodies to uh, take care of uh, all the people that are going to eventually find out that chiropractor is the best kept secret in the, in the space out there helping people stay healthy long term from what I like to say cradle to grave. We help people from the first day to the last day. And I think that that's something that more people need to be aware of is that chiropractic isn't about just the incidence of an opiate problem. It's not just about the incidence of a neck pain, back pain, uh, car crash, slip and fall incident. It's about giving life to people. And I think that when people start understanding that chiropractic gives life back to people, human potential, what did you say there, Dr. Thaxton, giving people the ability to go back to what they know as a normal state of uh, being to where that they can do the things of the quality of life type stuff. And I believe ch all chiropractors are inter interested in the outcome of how people start developing under care. And I believe that all chiropractors have one goal. And that's to remove the vertebral subluxation, allowing the innate potential to flow and taking out all the concerns that are kind of, you know, locking people down. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, once we start adjusting more people, we change the perception of how chiropractic is seen on a global status, too. Well, I told Steve in the very beginning of this, if this bill goes through in any way, shape and form with language like we want, which we didn't get all we wanted this year. But I said, it'll go nationwide because everybody's <laughs> going to hear about it and people are going to want to start going, hey, we're actually number one for something positive in the United States. Usually we're 48th, 49th, and 50th in something bad. West Virginia's struggled in a lot of, pro a lot of areas uh, from poverty uh, to loss of, of population. I think we're the only state in the union that's lost uh, population every year for the last 50 years. So we love seeing West Virginia being on top of the game, so to speak. And in this case, we are. And loved your Jim uh, Parker quote of from the cradle to the grave. That was great. And that's, that's the reality. The next big hurdle standing in front of chiropractic, in my opinion, is that so much of the general populace has no idea 
what a chiropractor does or what they can do. So uh, press like we're doing right now and getting more chiropractors out there in the field, educating people, the world is going to change at some point and realize that it's not a pharmaceutical deficiency we're all suffering from. But I can say when you have a vertebral subluxation, you're going to have problems. And <laughs> correcting that is the deficiency out there. Well, so many people don't understand. I've talked to a few people about this, and they looked at me and they went, you know, when my grandmother has can cancer. You're telling me she can't get an opioid? No. You know, it's not for a broken bone. It's not for a terminally ill. It's not for a chronic type condition that requires medication. It's for neuromuscular skeletal strain sprains. The legislation has been written that the medical doctors do have the leeway with cancer patients, with chronically ill patients. They have no problem getting those folks opioids. And in the big picture, that's what so much of the Oxycontin and like type drugs were created for. But somewhere along the line, it got mixed up in neuromuscular skeletal pain or pain in general. And it became real easy just to write a script for that rather than actually do an exam and figure out what's going on with the patient and come up with an accurate diagnosis. So chiropractors, we have more education in hours and diagnosis than the medical doctors. So what makes you a doctor? It's your ability to diagnose. It's not your ability to make a chiropractic adjustment or your ability to write a script for any drug. What makes you a doctor is your license states you have the ability to diagnose. We have more training and diagnosis than medical doctors. Therefore, we should be doing first line of defense care and making the diagnosis. That's what we do. You've made it to Cairo Hustle Live. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Close for Cairo, Cairo Sushi, Dr. Barbara Eaton's 56 Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, Dr. Alok Trevetti, The Black Diamond Club, Element Mattresses, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, Med Zone, Vantage Point Marketing, Movo University, Vita Chiropractic, The Universal Tractioning System, Imaging Services, Ignite Marketing, and Zingit Solutions. Let's hustle. Yeah, I, I've also saw, you know, I worked in the office for five and a half years. I don't know if you guys knew that before I started interviewing you, but I was actually in the trenches uh, working in the office and I, I learned about uh, patient care and protocols. And uh, I've seen some of the best exams I've ever seen in my entire life done by a chiropractic uh, physician. And I've seen some of the best uh, exams I've ever seen in my entire life um, with x-ray and, you know, aftercare stuff and active care stuff and, you know, just putting people through rehab. I worked in a CBP office, that's chiropractic biophysics. And to see what somebody can do after you know, 26 visits, 36 visits, and they get their curve back into their uh, lumbar spine, they get curved back into their cervical curve, what that can do for people it just blows my mind. But um, let's let's talk a little bit more. Uh, I know that you guys had some, uh, some, some mentioned to me off camera about this uh, pill mill idea. And let's talk a little bit about the dirty side of what's happening with, uh, you know, not so much just talking about the pills, but what happens to the person once they don't get pills anymore? Heroin. Yeah, in our state, it's become a heroin epidemic because it's cheaper than the pills and more accessible. So, and then what will you do to get your heroin fix? And it's created a huge problem in crime in our state and, and across the nation. Um, and, and the shame of all this, Jim, is, is that there's been some great reporting done by newspapers and national magazines that the whole pharmaceutical industry was pushing this whole pill thing. They were trying to sell pills no matter what the cost to the public. They were trying to push this whole thing, and they succeeded. But it's obviously backfiring on them, and we're realizing. Now, I'm not sure where they're going to make their next great profits from, if it's 
convincing the world that everybody has to have a hepatitis vaccine or some other crazy idea. But they're always going to be trying. It's a, it, pharmaceutical being the huge billion dollar industry it is, they're always trying to make a dollar somewhere. But in this case, it's truly destroyed our society. And I hope that the American public, the world public wakes up and realizes it's not about taking a pill. If you need that, okay. But you should exhaust all, all other options before you end up taking pills. Well, the thing is there, Dr. Steve, is I think that most people just don't, I say this time and time again, it's almost like broken record language to me. No, most people just don't know where to go or who to trust. And uh, the chiropractic profession has been uh, black eye and bloody nose discredited for the past uh, 80 years. And people think that chiropractors are, are second rate doctors and that you guys don't have a place to help people. And uh, I think that the public's perception of what chiropractic really is, is so far skewed that we need to start building a better campaign and we need to get better press and we need to start a better marketing strategy to tell people that chiropractic is the answer for this concern and many more. Couldn't agree more. When we look back at history in 1987, winning the Wilkes, Dr. Chester Wilkes versus the AMA, that should have been a huge uh, publicized court case where the AMA had designed a 20 year program to extinguish the profession of chiropractic. Very little publicity came out on that. Very little knowledge ever followed with that. But we know we had that fight. The AMA isn't so much against us anymore as they used to be, but we do have a whole battle with a much bigger opponent now, and it's the pharmaceutical industry because we are definitely taking dollars from them, and they're not liking it. So we've got a big battle, and Lord, do they have the money. Yeah, you know, that's why we just need to keep on uh, carrying on with good faith and taking care of people. And I think that the chiropractic profession has been positioned to do that for a long, long time. It's just that you guys, uh, I think, honestly, my heart of hearts, we need to start lobbying harder, just like what you guys did out there. You need to get into the politicians and tell people that there's urban decay because of this this problem. And that, you know, it's not just uh, the guy that's a drug addict that's dying and, and shooting heroin anymore. It's the guy that lives next door to you that's kid plays on your soccer team on the same soccer team. It's the soccer mom that's shooting up in between picking her kids up from school that ODs in the parking lot while picking her kids up. It's those type of concerns that are real. And, you know, I was just talking to one of my good friends out in North Carolina and they have in Waynesville, North Carolina, in the town square, a sign that shows how many people uh, die from heroin or opiate epidemic uh, concerns. Well, the amount of hours that, Sean and I and, and the two other in our group and the Chiropractic Society uh, in West Virginia put in on this. Uh, it was pretty significant. And Sean has a wife and three wonderful children, and he would have loved to have been spending more time with them instead of talking to legislatures. And sometimes we would uh, be out to dinner with them till late hours trying to educate them on what was going on. But we, we realized this is something we had to do. And I encourage any chiropractor that's watching this, get involved in your state government. Make friends with the legislatures. You need to know these people. You're going to need to be able to get in their ear and educate them about our profession. And that's the only way we're going to move our profession forward uh, is by educating people and in particularly, in this case, the legislatures. Yeah. And, you know, I think that most people, uh, they, they want to make an impact going forward. So I, I, I praise you guys for starting uh, a good movement and uh, getting people to be aware that there is a concern and that the more that chiropractic steps up and the chiropractors become higher self-esteem, more revered in their communities, and more people are going to start utilization because uh, we just did a Gallup poll at Palmer College, and there's only between 14 to 15% utilization of chiropractic services over the past 24 months. So knowing those numbers and those stats, um, we can start seeing utilization of chiropractic care doubling over the next 48 uh, months or the next 24 months, and we could really see a huge shift from people in utilization and uh, you know, the profitability going down from the medical industry, but the um, outcome of patient care going up. So I think that those are things we need to start really, uh, once this starts happening, we need to 
to, to make sure we're, we're tracking the the progress and track tracking the where we need to follow the money basically is what i'm saying yeah when, when you look at it from palmer saying we're we're, we're treating and i'm interpreting that as treating 14 to 15 percent of the population and we know that 80 percent of the population is going to suffer back pain at some point in their life there's a huge disconnect in the people that are suffering and the amount of people that are getting treatment we should be treating those folks. But what's standing between us? Well, we knew co-pays were one of it. Insurance coverage was another. And now just the knowledge of the general public of what chiropractors do and can do for their problems. So this is wonderful. We're having this. I hope it goes all over Facebook. I hope it gets uh, publicized and shared around the world. Well, I, I thank you guys uh, for uh, sharing as much as you have. I know we have a lot more of these uh, episodes. We're going to uh, start firing off and getting more people talking about uh, what's happening in the state of West Virginia. And hopefully we, we start this type of control and we get more people from other states that start implementing the same carbon copy into their legislation to get more people um, basically saved. You know, I tell people you should have two doctors in your life, one to keep you healthy and one to save you from dying. And I believe chiropractors are the ones that keep people healthy. And uh, if we don't close them today for chiropractic, you know what they'll do, boys? They'll close them for drugs or surgery. So we have to go out there and we have to start saving lives uh, one spine at a time, like many people say in the chiropractic industry. But if we do not tell people the truth about chiropractic and close them for chiropractic, somebody else will close them for drugs or surgery. And that's certain. We see it happening all across this nation and it's becoming a huge problem. It's almost bankrupting states and we have to start figuring out how we can curb this decline in hu human existence and make uh, chiropractic uh, like Trump would probably say great again. And uh, I think that the more people understand that chiropractic is the answer, um, they'll start realizing that they're going to start telling their friends and family to go see one too, not just for their health decline, but for their life source. So, with that being said, is there anything that I didn't ask you guys you'd like to share before we cut out? Well, I would like to add to what you just said, and this is what I tell my patients. The medical profession, and my brother's a, a, a great plastic surgeon. Uh, he's a great medical doctor. And the medical profession as a whole is fantastic at saving lives. But they are miserably failing at quality of life issues. And 80% of the patients that walk into any doctor's office are there for quality of life issues. And that's what the chiropractic profession does so well. It returns your quality of life, that you have a life that you like living again. And that's what we are so good at doing. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And I appreciate you uh, following up with uh, the content that I'm putting out there with my languaging. Um, I'm not a doctor. If anybody's out there, um, I'm a I'm a journalist and I run a podcast and I make documentary films for the chiropractic profession. I've sold chiropractic. I've worked in a chiropractic office. And I think that, you know, for me, a lot of people ask me, why are you so fired up about chiropractic, Jim Chester? And I'll say, well, I studied long and hard within myself, my heart of hearts. And I said, what can I put my time and energy and life into 100% believe in it? And it was the most a beautiful profession that I could ever attach myself to and support and champion. And that was chiropractic. So I appreciate what you guys do. I appreciate that you guys have stepped forward and uh, taken time away from your uh, family and friends and going out there and uh, really put your feet forward with your minds and hearts and got this thing to work the right way. And it uh, looks like we're going to start making waves in other States and uh, let, let's just uh, step up and be proud for this win today, but know that we have many more going forward and uh, let's keep track and things and make sure that uh, we get the outcomes that we uh, suspect will happen. We feel the same way, Jim. <laughs> well, cool. Um, I'm going to close out then and say thank you to Michael Tokash with Imaging Services for sponsoring this episode of the Cairo Hustle uh, evening uh, stream. And this is our e evening session with uh, Dr. Steve Thaxon and Sean Cottrell out there in West Virginia. And I just want to say uh, you guys are just one story away. Keep hustling. Thanks, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. All right. Thank you for listening to Cairo Hustle Live. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.